It's time once again to celebrate that we get a premium live event on a Saturday. This time it is WWE Elimination Chamber. And this is Mr. Super Oz's Triple Shot. What I think will happen, what I want to happen, and my wild card pick. But when it comes to what I think, I think that if you haven't gotten your very limited first printing of my 68 page graphic novel everlasting survivors volume one all day long you should click the link in the description take yourself to the etsy store and pick one up while they last there were only ever 100 of the jeff hicks covers printed and only ever 50 of the nick crook covers printed so now that the shillings out of the way let's get to the wwe elimination chamber triple shot what i think will happen when it comes to this one, it's pretty simple. I've been hearing it all over the place. I've been seeing it all over the YouTube. It's pretty simple. You give the fans what they want in Montreal, Quebec. You give them Sami Zayn getting that one, two, three. He holds up the Universal title. He holds up the World Heavyweight title. The confetti falls. You play the classic NXT music. Everybody in the house goes crazy. While they are celebratory, you have the referee notice that Roman Reigns' foot was under the bottom rope, and you have at least one, if not two, other referees come to co corroborate what this referee sees. He is he's uh, thrown off. He's he's out of he's out of his mind. He's like, oh, how do I do it? How do I do it? But the referee calls off the music. He he takes the titles from Sam and he says, I'm sorry, I missed it. It's my fault. Please forgive me. The match must continue. From that point, you have Roman Reigns and Sammy continue to wrestle. And at this point, it's probably only another three to five minutes. But in that time, you have the emergence of the Usos and Solo. And even Paul can help cheat if you need. But in this restarted portion of the match, that's when you have... Everything working against Sami Zayn, you have you have Sami Zayn lose uh, with a Superman punch, maybe a spear, whatever it takes. Uh, all I would do is make sure that it's a one, two, three, and not a choke out with the guillotine choke because I just don't want there to be any question that this isn't the end of the line for. Sammy and with the confetti all still in the ring and with the fans all deflated, that's when the bloodline does what they were unable to do at the Royal Rumble and they all beat down and take out Sami Zayn. Well, not 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 do, but not complete at the Royal Rumble, I mean. And at this point, in a mirror of the Royal Rumble, we see Kevin Owens return. Great music, great pop. He comes down with a chair, he he runs off the bloodline. He helps up Sammy. We get the the best friends hug in the end. And even though they, uh, the fans in Montreal don't get Sami Zayn being the undisputed universal WWE champion, what they do get is the bringing back together of the best friends in their hometown, where they grew up, where they started. And with this, you begin down the road to WrestleMania where Sami and Kevin vow to end the bloodline by taking away the Raw and the SmackDown titles from the Usos because without the titles, there is no power within the bloodline. And Cody has already shown respect to Sami. Sami has already shown respect to Cody. Uh, Cody can give credit to Kevin Owens for telling him who to reach out to to find success for this comeback tour of the WWE. It's just all roads lead to Sami and Kevin winning the tag titles at WrestleMania and subsequently Cody winning uh, the top titles off of Roman Reigns. And so that is what I think will happen at WWE's Elimination Chamber. But with that, it is time to move on to what I want to see happen at the Elimination Chamber in Montreal, Quebec. Canada, Canada, Canada. 
We know that the WWE loves repeating Montreal, the screw job, when they go to Montreal, Quebec. But that's not what I want to repeat here at the Elimination Chamber. What I want to repeat is a spot that I think is highly underrated. That is, and speaking of rated, a spot the rated our superstar did when he took out Kofi Kingston from the Elimination Chamber match for the World Heavyweight title, question mark? Wow, one of the titles, and inserted himself into the match. So I want to mirror that spot, but not for the WWE Championship, for the United States Championship. At time of recording, the participants are the champion, Austin Theory, Seth Rollins, Bronson Reed, Montez Ford, um, Johnny Gargano, and... Ah, oh, crap. Who's the... There's one other participant, but because I'm forgetting them... I'm going to have them be taken out by the man I want to enter the chamber. Oh, come on. This is so frustrating. Anyway, one member of the chamber is taken out. And that man is replaced by Baron Corbin. Reason being is everybody on the internet is saying that, oh, WWE has given up on Baron Corbin. So wouldn't it be so very WWE that just to prove the internet wrong, they strap the United States title onto Baron Corbin right after everybody is saying the company has forgotten about him or given up on him. And so what I would like to see happen is for Baron Corbin to be proving that he is better than people say, take out a participant of the match, enter the, the cage first. Early on, take out Austin Theory, preferably. And that way that when Austin Theory is eliminated, we're guaranteed a new champion, have... Corbin make it to the end, and upon the conclusion of the match, have Baron Corbin be crowned the United States champion. And in route to WrestleMania, we would then have Austin Theory, who thought that he had the right plan, he thought he had found the, the right way to go, but have him second guess uh, all of the actions that have taken place, and with that, have him fall under the tutelage of Johnny Gargano. Have Johnny basically be his Apollo Creed teaching uh, Austin Theory how to get back on top, like Apollo did for Rocky, uh, in route to WrestleMania. And then, because the company clearly sees something in theory, and I just think it'd be funny if they took the title off of him at Elimination Chamber just so that he can get it back at Mania, like I said, to, to squash the rumors that Corbin is forgotten about and unloved and uh, considered a lost cause. And I, I love the way from NXT. Uh, I thought Dexter, Indy, Austin, Candice, and Johnny were a lot of fun. The only difference I would do on the main roster on Monday Night Raw is add Tommaso Ciampa to the group when the time comes for him to be uh, good and healthy and, you know, because Tommaso Ciampa, Candice LeRae, and Johnny Gargano have, uh, you know, a, a good past and work well together. And so what I want to see happen is for Baron Corbin to take out a member of the U.S. title field, put himself in, walk away with the title, and for that to lead to Austin Theory to turn babyface, be humbled, stop with the selfie th game, and... Um, be able to prove himself to the fans and, more importantly, to himself. Last and finally, my wild card pick for the WWE Elimination Chamber is for the mixed match match between Edge, Beth Phoenix, Rhea Ripley, and Finn Balor. I want to see Rhea Ripley pin Edge because she is the one who needs the most in this match. She's the one who won the Royal Rumble. She's en route to challenging Charlotte at WrestleMania. She is the one and only member of this match that really absolutely needs to be protected. I love Edge. I love Beth. I love Finn. But of all of the participants, Rhea is the one who really needs to be treated right. Because... Last time she wrestled Charlotte at WrestleMania, it didn't go so well for her. Now, I get it. There was nobody in the house, and everything was a little wonky. But uh, 
WWE having Rhea pin Hall of Famer Edge is a very unorthodox way to win the match. And it's a way to make her look extra strong on the road to WrestleMania. So I've actually heard lots of people uh, over the internet say that, oh, I think Edge and Beth will win here and then Balor will bring back the Demon at Mania. But the problem with that, in my mind at least, is Demon Balor is what gets him the big pop. And if he's continuing to work heel, I don't think that you'd want to go that route. And so I almost see a, a world where potentially Edge's mania looks like this. It would be Edge, Rey Mysterio, and Bad Bunny taking on Dominic Mysterio, Finn Balor, and Damian Priest in a six-man match because Rhea is preoccupied with Charlotte and, um, you know, Beth can have gotten her licks in all throughout the road to Elimination Chamber and... You know, you could even do another storyline write-off if you want at the conclusion of this uh, match, if if need be, to find a reason to not use her at Mania. Or she can even just be the X Factor at Mania that gets the baby face of the victory, uh, if that's what they would choose. But, yeah, I, I just don't see any need to bring Demon Balor back so long as Finn is working heel. And so, yeah, that brings us to the end of my triple shot for WWE Elimination Chamber. Come back Monday to hear what me, Brandon, and Josiah have to say about the Dark Knight trilogy in the All or Nothing treatment. Uh, come back Wednesday for another Wednesday Rewind. And yeah, come back next Friday to hear about the update for Everlasting Survivors Volume 1 all day long coming back to Indiegogo. Um, and yeah, thank you for tuning in.